My live feed, I'm managing my backtest report. What do I do? Well, first of all, live and backtested results will never match 100%, but there are things that you can do to maximize the profitability of your strategies. Really? What are those things? In this video, we will discuss the top seven mistakes that new option traders make when building and executing strategies on AlgoTest. In addition to this, we will also provide a solution for each of these mistakes so that you never have to make these mistakes on your algo trading journey. Welcome back to AlgoTest. Stick around until the end of the video for bonus points for all of our serious traders. Now let's get straight into the video. 1. Deep ITM Strikes Deep ITM strikes have a wide bid and ask spread. The difference between the highest price that a buyer is willing to pay and the lowest price that a seller is willing to accept is called the bid ask spread. Deep ITM strikes tend to have a wider bid and ask spread primarily because of the liquidity of these contracts. There's not much liquidity in these contracts. But what does that mean? It means that not enough people are trading the contracts. In a backtest report, it could still look very profitable because the backtest assumes that you get the best price for each of the strategies that you are trading. However, this will not be the case in the live market and you will see heavy slippages because of the wide bid and ask spread. Solution: Avoid trading deep ITM strikes. Number 2. Small Stop Loss and Targets Using a tight stop loss like 1%, 2% or 2 points or 3 points may potentially not work as well in the live market as they would in a backtest. Let's understand why. Algotest uses 1 minute OHLC data for backtesting a strategy. For example, let's consider a strategy using simple momentum. Say that the entry or buy of your strategy happens on the 15th second of the minute. After entry, the price of your instrument hits the stop loss price within the same one minute candle, but this candle closes above the stop loss price. In this case, in a back test, an entry would be shown. However, in live trading and in forward test, your leg would have exited. Solution: Use wider stop losses that aren't hit within a minute. A minimum of 15% is a good aiming point. 3. Small momentum The simple momentum feature is a great way to build strategies that capture trend in the market. However, just like every other product, it has its own limitations. If you use a simple momentum feature with very tight entry conditions like 1% or 2% or 3%, by the time one entry is taken, another entry condition may already be triggered, as the market may have already moved a similar amount in this short span of time. This will obviously affect your upcoming entry prices and also result in too many entry signals. Solution: Use at least 10% simple momentum when using option prices. 4. Aggressive Trailing Stop Losses among other uses, the trailing stop loss or TSL feature is really handy in trying to protect your profits in the event that the market reverses. However, aggressively trailing your stop losses will probably not work out as well in the live markets. For example, using a 1 1 TSL with a mere stop loss of just 10% of your option price can result in your stop loss being hit within the same minute or two of its entry. Solution: Avoid using aggressive trailing stop losses. Rule of thumb: Avoid using TSLs where the first value is greater than the second value. 5. Too many re-entries. Too many re-entries can result in a slippage disaster. Remember, whenever you're trading live, all of your entries will face some sort of slippage. Now combine this with several compounding re-entries and you have all of this slippage adding up over a long period of time. This will obviously adversely affect your PNL and your live trades will not match the backtest. Remember, a backtest may show you a nice PNL curve, but that is because the backtest considers that you get the most ideal price for your strategy every single time. And we traders know that that is sadly not the reality in real life. Solution: Try to cap your re-entries to about 3 or 4 maximum. 6. Tight data points. Very tight data points like 100 rupees overall target or 100 rupees overall stop loss aren't very pragmatic when trading. For example, a 100 rupees target or stop loss when trading Nifty options is merely just 4 points as the option contracts in the Nifty have a lot size of 25 contracts. 25 into 4, 100 rupees. So only a 4 point move 
can either hit your target or stop loss. And again, that isn't the most pragmatic approach to building a trading strategy because you'll see a lot of variance in your live PNL versus your backtested results. Solution, use higher targets and overall stop losses. Number seven, candle close. Now, Algotest has two ways of executing your trading strategies, one of which is candle close. Candle close is very similar to how we perform our back tests, but we're not going to talk too much in depth about this feature since we have a whole video explaining and outlining what the feature is and how you can use it to your benefit. We've linked that in the description below, so please do check it out. Additional pointers. Now, if you've stuck around this long in the video, firstly, give yourself a pat on the back. You're definitely a serious trader. Here's some points that'll just help you improve your overall execution as well as when you build trading strategies. Keep these in mind for the next time you're backtesting or live trading. One, use slippages. Somewhere around 0.5 to 1% is a good starting point. Two, use the correct execution settings for the type of strategy you're executing. We've also explained this in another video. Three, always remember, the backtest assumes you get the most ideal prices for your strategy, but slippages will always exist in the live market. This will therefore affect your PL and must be accounted for when trading live and when backtesting and building a trading strategy. And finally, four, make sure your strategy is not curve fit or over optimized. Make use of the in sample, out sample, as well as the Monte Carlo drawdown simulation features that we have on Algotest when backtesting to make sure that your strategies are not curve fit. So thanks for watching this video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope you've learned something new and it's given you clarity going forward on how to build strategies on Algotest and execute them appropriately. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to our channel and check out all the links in the description to get huge bonuses when you sign up on Algotest. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.